Now in this video, I'm going to talk about another problem that thousands of people from all over the world have had in regards to playing the top turtle, and that's opening up the position a little bit, opening up to stick your knee inside of the side turtle, or um, opening it up so that way you can get like one-on-ones and arm control and possibly even uh, the seatbelt. A lot of people have trouble with this. So let's say we're here to have the side turtle position. A lot of times this applies a lot when it comes to being on the side. Front headlock tends to be a little bit different because um, I can usually feed my arm through for a front headlock or I can just attack his neck where I'm in front. Well, and we'll possibly talk about that in another video as well. So I'm here like this, right? I have my position, but he's nice and tight and I want to open things up. The first thing that we have to make sure that we do is we have to make sure we keep hip connection. I talk about this in another video and I talk about the importance of having hip connection. I want to make sure I keep hip connection because really this is what is controlling him from the top turtle. And nothing else is really controlling him. My, my arms aren't controlling him. I'm not controlling his hands or his wrists. I'm not controlling his neck. I'm not controlling his upper body. Basically what I have more often than not is I have the hip to control. So when he goes to move around, it's, it's easier for me to, to stay connected with him, stay behind him and so on and so forth. Even when I go behind him, I still have a hip connection, right? So we just turn a little bit. Like I'm here like this, I still have some sort of hip connection on him. I'm focused on keeping my left hip kind of chopped down on the back of his hip so that way I can gauge where he might go. You know what I mean? He might um, drop this shoulder for some reason and then I just follow behind or he might drop the other shoulder for some reason and then I just follow behind, right? So I'm using my hip connection to, to kind of predict where he's gonna go. But if we go back, so now we go back to this position here. I have this hip connection. So I know that I should be okay with keeping some sort of control on him. I'm also connecting across his hip um, on the bottom here. This is gonna give me the opportunity to start kind of playing around a little bit more. So the, one of the first things that I like to do is I like to so get, get nice and tight here, is I like to grab the wrist, right? So if we just turn all the way this way. So notice how, yeah, notice how he's covering up because he's trying to stop like chokes and all those things. I'm gonna grab his wrist here like this. The reason why I'm gonna grab his wrist is because I have better leverage grabbing at his wrist. It's a very good leverage point for me. It's also gonna be pretty hard for him to stop me from pulling. So I'm here like this, I grab at his wrist and look what's happening to his body. Try to bring your, your face and your body back down to the ground. It's, this is actually extremely hard for him to do that. Right? This is a very simple concept, but it's actually very hard for him to stay down to the ground because I'm able to grab his wrist. So he's kind of covering up, he's blocking, so cover up again. I grab his wrist, I pull up, and now I can use this to shove my knee inside. Once I get my knee inside, this opens up a lot of things for me because now when he tries to get a tight turtle, it's, it becomes hard. Let's oh, you get back. So I come here. So now I get back. So now I'm here like this. But this gives me the opportunity to get good control on him. I can use this to kind of flare his arm out, right? And when he goes to get his elbow back, at that point, there's already enough space for me to get my seatbelt on him. And I can keep this knee inside. Or let's say if I can't keep the knee inside, I can use the seatbelt to pick him up and then get my knee inside. So that's one thing that I like to do when the person's really starting, starting to try to cover up. So let's go back. Here, right, I like to grab the wrist here and just pull up like this. It opens up lots of things. It's gonna open up this here too, where I can get a one-on-one -on, -one on him. So we're here, I can pick up, I can get a knee inside, I can get a one-on-one, -on -one, and now I have very good position on him. You know, if you wanna get crafty, you can keep this grip. Where he goes to try to get the grip back here. It, it becomes hard, I'm pulling at him. This opens things up for me, to, for me to start working my strong positions on him and get my seatbelt and now I can start working on to come through, possibly take the back or whatever. So that's one particular thing that I like to do because that's very common. It's very common for the person to cover up and it's very common for them to cover up and kind of bring their hands upward so their wrists are exposed. Let's say his wrists weren't exposed. Let's say he's covering, but I can't grab the wrist. So I can still grab the wrist now. Kind of bring your hands down even more. Yeah, so now I can't, I can't get, grab the wrist. The next thing that I'll go to is I'll go to the shoulder. If you're on the grappler's guide, um, go to the leverage points of grappling section. I talk about the different leverage points of grappling. That section is actually very important in my opinion because it, it, it discusses and explains what some of the best leverage and control points that you can use on your opponent to where you can move them around. So right now, I can't grab his wrist. I can't do these things. Watch what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna grab his shoulder here. So I'm gonna just kind of tuck, really cup inside. I have good hip control. Just try to stay down. I'm gonna grab his shoulder. Keep doing that, and now I get my knee inside. Here, 
If I can't pull it up like right away here, and, and I can't get I'm gonna grab both of his shoulders. I'm gonna keep shaking him up so I can drive my knee inside. And now this possibly opens up so I can get my seatbelt as well. Those are just different things that we can use to, um, to pretty much open up this space so we can drive this knee inside and get control. The reason why gonna, we wanna drive the knee inside is because it, it keeps his shell broken, right? The reason why it's called a turtle is because he wants to get all tight. He wants to protect himself in his own personal shell. My goal when he has this shell is to break his shell open. So be, by, by having the ability to drive that knee underneath him, it keeps the shell open, right? It keeps a crack in the shell and it gives me the ability and exposes vulnerabilities for me to get better positions on him, right? That's why you'll see a lot of people when they have the side turtle, they're trying to drive that knee inside so then that way they can start working their positions because we wanna crack the shell and after we crack the shell, we wanna keep the shell open, all right? So let's go back again. So now he's nice and tight again, right? So we're here. I can't do these things, I might not feel like I can um, basically get my, um, my opponent up by pulling his shoulders or anything along those lines as well. What else can I possibly do, right? I'm still gonna keep some sort of hip connection, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the outside of his foot here. So if we just turn this way, right? So I'm gonna go here, right? I'm gonna grab the outside of his foot. And I, I'm gonna grab the far foot, and the reason for this is because it's usually easier for me to grab. And then what I'm gonna do next, I'm still gonna keep the hip connection, but I'm gonna li start lifting him up. So notice how I start lifting him up. It's gonna be very hard for him to keep this shell. Right, try to stay tight. It's just not, it's just not easy. At this point, I can drive my knee inside, get my position, and I can start working, all right? So what we're doing is we're basically looking around the shell. What is, what is vulnerable to him? What is sticking out for me to grab? First, the wrist was sticking out for me to grab. Then the shoulders were sticking out for me to grab. And then I felt like the wrist and shoulders weren't available, so now the ankles are sticking out for me to grab. So now when we're here, I'm still keeping this hip connection because I wanna still make sure I have um, body control on him. And then I pull up on the ankle here. So once I pull up on the ankle, now I can work to slide my knee. Let's say I can't slide my knee in here directly, I'll slide my other knee inside. Here, let's say he's still tight with his right leg. What I'll do is I'll start pulling him to break him down. I don't need him to always be in the turtle position. And now, there's times where I'll just let him go. So go back to turtle. And look what I did. I followed him up, okay? So, I broke his shell, I tilted his shell, and I said, okay, you know what, you want the turtle back? I'll let you have the turtle back, but I follow him. So in that way, I can then infiltrate the shell, right? I get in there, I keep his shell open, and then I can start working my attacks. There's so much more to it, uh, but the point of this is the concept of studying your position, right? The concept of having a good control point, which is my hip control, and basically navigating the situation, right? I see what's, what he's doing. I have my good control point, which gives me some time to figure out, are his wrists exposed? If they are, I'll possibly pull them up. Are his shoulders light? If they are, I'll possibly pull them up. If, if everything's tight, is his ankle exposed? If it is, I'll possibly pull it up. I can either pull it up, get my knee inside, and break the shell right away, or if I can't do that, I'll just keep pulling him, tip him over, make him run back to the turtle, and then infiltrate the shell as he's basically going back. All right, so that's the biggest point. It's not even these technical things that I'm showing you. It's that get your good control point, navigate your situation so that now we can figure out what's being exposed because that's not only gonna help you when it comes to the turtle position, it's gonna help you when it comes to tons and tons of situations. So play around with this idea. If you have any questions or comments, post below and I'll do the best I can to help you out, all right? Peace.